Hi everyone, I'm Nitin and welcome back to PSE Science and today in this video I'll be going through reproduction in plants. Okay, let's get started. Okay, for the first segment of this video, I'm going to teach you the flower parts and each and every function of each part. Okay, so let's jump straight into it. Okay, so basically the flower has male parts and female reproductive parts. So for the male parts of the flower, there is the anther and the filament. And for the female reproductive parts of the flower, we have the stigma, style, ovary and ovule. And these parts are color coded by blue and red color. Okay? So, first let's take a look at the male parts. So, we have the anther here first. So, the anther actually produces and stores the pollen grains. Okay? So, I hope you remember my plant cycle video because I've actually taught uh, pollination in my plant cycle video and I've taught pollen grains in my plant cycle video. And I've also taught the parts and I do hope you remember them. So, the anther actually produces and stores pollen grains. Okay? The filament holds the anther upright. Okay? The stigma receives the pollen grains in the process of pollination. So, do you remember pollination? So, pollination is actually the transfer of pollen grains to another flower of the same species or it could be just to the stigma because sometimes that it is self-pollinated so it could be like so this is a self-pollinated flower so this anther could actually uh, have the pollen grains go into this stigma. Okay? So, it varies uh, depending on the situation. And the style actually connects the stigma to the ovary and allows the pollen tube to grow downwards to the ovary. Okay. So basically, after pollination, right, this, this uh, pollen grain actually grows down into a tube and it goes down to fertilize with the ovary. Uh, with the ovules in the ovary okay so, uh, so it doesn't actually fertilize with the ovule and the pollen grain is not actually a male reproductive cell okay so actually the this is a very common misconception so the male reproductive cell is not the pollen grain the male reproductive cell is actually inside the pollen grain okay so you are supposed to say it in that manner okay so when you're writing, so the male reproductive cell inside the pollen grains fertilizes with the female reproductive cell in the ovules. Okay, so that's how you're supposed to explain the fertilization. So, ovary. This contains the ovules and develops into a fruit after fertilization has taken place. So, ovules actually develop into fruits. Okay, and ovules actually contain the egg okay and they develop into seeds okay so i hope you understand that okay now let's move on to the next uh next segment of this video okay for the next segment of this video i'm going to go through two important plant processes okay so, the two important plant processes are pollination. So, pollination is basically the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of a flower of the same species. Uh, what I said just now in the previous slide. And fertilization is the process when the male reproductive cell in the pollen grain fuses with the female reproductive cell in the ovule. Just like what I said just now. So, I hope you are familiar with these two processes and these two processes are extremely important uh, for plant cycle uh, for sorry for plant reproductive system okay so you got to know this okay 
For the third segment of this video, I'm going to go through what do the ovary and the ovule develop after fertilization. After fertilization. Okay. So, the ovary actually develops into the fruit because the ovary uh, actually develops into the fruit and the ovule develops into the seeds. So, imagine we have a fruit over here, okay? So, imagine this is a tomato cross-section. So, the tomato, right, it actually has many seeds inside. So, all of these are the seeds inside the tomato. Okay? So, this is the tomato, right? And just imagine uh, this being the stigma, okay? Okay? Just imagine this being the stigma style. So this is the stigma style over here. Okay, so this is the style. And then over here, right, we actually have something. So this thing over here, right, contains the So this over here is the ovary and all these dots over here are the ovules. Okay, so as you can see, right, they're actually very similar in what I'm saying over here, right? They look very similar, right? So this is how like basically, right, it actually forms into a, into a fruit. Okay, so this is the tomato. Okay. But you have to understand something. The tomato is actually a fruit, okay? Many people like get confused because they, they think that tomato is actually a vegetable, okay? So tomatoes are actually not vegetables. And let me tell you a rule. So anything with seeds are fruits. Okay, so now tell me is a, a lady's finger a vegetable or fruits? So, think about it. Does lady's finger have seeds? Yes, lady's finger has seeds. But most people think it's a vegetable. But actually, lady's fingers are actually fruits. Do you know that? Okay, so just a fun fact over here. You can tell your parents when they're shopping, uh, when they're shopping, you know, like, when your parents are tick the lady's finger and then you can maybe like ask your parents whether or not the lady's finger is the fruit and let's see if you're even if your parents know this okay so go try this out for yourself now let's move on to the next segment of this video okay so for segment number four why are the fruits so important The fruits, why are they important? Okay, so actually, right, fruits help to protect the seeds. So, not only that, you know the fruits actually help to protect the seeds, right? The fruit contain the seeds, which are useful for reproduction, ensuring the continuity of their kind. Okay? And fruits have special characteristics that aid in dispersal of seeds. Okay. So you can actually watch a video on seed dispersal and I'll put it in the description box below and you can actually uh, watch that video and understand the special characteristics that help in seed dispersal, okay? So, so fruits help to protect the seeds. You know fruits, right? They are very fleshy and juicy, right? So these uh, fleshy and juicy things actually uh, contain the seeds and they protect it. And the fruits are actually also attracting animals for them to eat the fruits in order to disperse the seeds as well. So I hope you have watched my previous video on seed dispersal because both of these, uh, all of these are actually linking together. So plant cycle, seed dispersal, everything links together, okay? So you need to know this uh, like very carefully, okay? So. So it actually attracts as well, attracts animals, okay? And 
fruits are uh, had I the, the seeds are used for reproduction, right? So which ensures the continuity of their kind. That's why the fruits actually help to protect the seeds. So the seeds are more important than the fruits, but at the same time the fruits are just as important as the seeds. Understand? Okay. So fruits have special characteristics that aid in dispersal of seeds. Okay? So I'll show you a video on seed dispersal in the description box below and you can watch it if you want to. Okay? So now let's move on. Okay, for segment number five, uh, let's go through what happens to the various parts of the flower after the fruit is formed. Okay, so basically, right, let's take a look at the answer. So, the petals, anthers, and filaments, and stigma, and style, actually, all the parts of the flower except the fruit and the seeds basically which are the ovules and ovaries uh, do not drop off because the rest of the parts will actually wither and drop off because they are useless because uh, one flower can actually have uh, one fruit or actually many fruits because right um, some some fruits actually come from one flower because right you know one flower has one ovary right because some fruits uh, have because some flowers actually have many many ovaries and the more ovaries right each ovary is taken as one fruit because each ovary has uh, ovules inside it okay so each ovary is one fruit some flowers have many ov ovaries and some flowers only have one ovary so it actually depends on the number of ovaries a flower has okay so uh, we only need the useful parts after the pollination and fertilization has taken place so all the other parts are useless at this point of time because you can't create another fruit from just um, uh, nothing what so that's the point so the petals anthers and filaments and stigma and style wither and drop off while the ovary and ovules develop to form the fruit and seeds respectively okay so I hope you understand what I've explained for this question and now let's move on to the next segment of this video okay for question number six uh for this segment i'm going to uh, show you this question over here so which is basically even though the stigma was removed the flower was still able to develop into a fruit how was this possible so one possible way is that the flower already got pollinated before the stigma was removed okay so just giving you an idea idea so this type of question is extremely important because this will definitely definitely come out in the exam uh, in any other way as well they might ask uh, what what if the anther was removed what is uh what if the what if the ovary was removed they, they might ask many different ways they might ask what if the petals were removed yeah so they, they might actually ask any of this so i'm just going to show you one example and you can use this same a method to apply it into other other questions as well okay so let's take a look at it okay so here's the answer before the stigma was removed it must have received pollen grains for pollination to take place thus fertilization was still able to occur allowing it to develop into a fruit so it's such a simple answer right because the stigma must have already receive the pollen grains in order to be pollinated so when the stigma was removed right it actually still can fertilize with the uh the the female reproductive part in the ovules right yeah so that is why this was possible okay now let's move on to the next one okay so for the seventh segment of this video and the last segment of this video I am going to go through the reproductive processes in plants, okay? So, these are the reproductive processes in plants. So, basically, there are around four processes. <coughs> One is germination. Another is pollination. Another is fertilization. And 
lastly seed dispersal so you all should know these processes and the and what are the functions and definitions of these processes and this is just for recap and you should know this by now okay so in the presence of uh, for germination so in the presence of water oxygen and warmth the seed undergoes germination to form the seedling okay do you remember this acronym wow so basically it refers to water oxygen and warmth okay and then for pollination we have the pollen grains land on the stigma for pollination to take place so i just went through this you should know that by now okay the for fertilization fertilization in plants take place in the ovary okay and also is the fusion of reproductive cells okay okay and for lastly for seed dispersal we have the fruits have different characteristics to help them disperse uh, the seeds okay so these are the four main processes and I hope you watch my previous videos on the plant cycle plant cycle important questions and also seed dispersal oh sorry not plant cycle important questions I mean plant transport system okay sorry yeah so you have to watch these videos in order to understand and relate back to this topic over here because all of these topics related to plant are actually uh, linked in some way or manner okay so with that i hope you understood what i've taught you in this video and thank you and bye bye i'll see you in my next video bye